Hello and welcome to a new video on the Sea Friendly Reef channel today with the third video of our Holland tour and with Guido. Yeah. Thank you for having us today. Yeah, no problem. It is a time for a very simple, not simple, sorry, a very <laughs> minimalistical thing. <laughs> I love that because we are talking about a 250 liter system. The yeah, total system is 250. Absolutely nice. With a few SPS corals, huge sand port inside. Yeah. And I would say that we have a closer look. It's a tiny tank. It's <laughs> not that easy to have you and the tank in the focus. <laughs> How are the dimensions of the tank? The dimensions are 70 uh, deep, 70 wide, 40 height. Uh, yeah, so it's about 180 liters in this way. This yeah. Way. yeah, you've got a uh, sump under the tank? Yeah. yeah, also. The sump is almost the same size, but much less height in water. Uh, so total is 250, I think. Nice. The, yeah. the sump is the same size as the tank. That's it's what I like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More water volume is always better, they say. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You're right. That was the main idea. So. I wanted to get as much water in the tank uh, for the, the system I liked because I really like nano fish and smaller stuff uh, so I didn't want to get a very big wide tank. Is that your first tank or do you have got some experience uh, before? No, it's, it's a third. The first tank was about, uh, it was really small, I think it's 25 liters with uh, mostly Mayanos and uh, leather cabbage corals. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's the very beginning. The typical start. Typical start. Yeah. And the Nemo, of course. But yeah. <laughs> the, the, the second uh, tank was a little bit bigger. Uh, I think it was 120 liters. Yeah, and this one uh, right after it. But it's in, in a time span of seven years, I think. Yeah. Okay. Seven years experience, yeah. just like me, roundabout. Ah, also. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You've got a very special individual aquascape here. Yeah. Can you tell us what was the main idea behind that scape? What I really like about it is when I was on holiday on, on the Maldives, you see all those coral bombies, small uh, islands on, on their cells with uh, formosas and uh, SPS corals on it. So that was my main idea of it, to replicate it. So yeah, the main idea is just one island with as much as sand invisible in, in view, sorry. So that's why it's yeah almost like a mushroom uh, sh shape with all the the SPS on the, on the top, formosas and tabling corals. That's that's the plan on the sides. You do not see that very often, and I love the fact that you have those huge sand areas yeah. next to it. It makes the the character of that tank very unique. Yeah, one of the uh, the benefits of this shape is for flow. If you have a really big, bulky rockwork, it will limit your flow because I have two pumps in it. One big uh, uh, reef wave, uh, big, it's the 25 model, so it's not that big, but, but for my tank it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah and, uh, and a J-Pow uh, neuro type flow. This cape really helps me in getting a lot of flow, what's needed for the SPS corals. How long do you have the tank right now and with that interior? I had it in my previous home, so I think it's maybe uh, like t two years now, if I remember it correctly. Your focus is on SPS, but you also yeah. added two LPS. I see a scully. I had it in a previous escape, I just couldn't get rid of it. I can understand that, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I kept them. Uh, and in the back, I don't think you can see it because it's really at, at the back of, back of the scape. Uh, that's branching uh, goniopora. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that, that's a really special coral, but yeah, it's, it's in the back because the main focus is really the SPS corals. And the huge uh, goniopora in uh, the red and the... It's getting really 
too big almost. I can't that, that's why I put it all, yeah, really in the corner because it was stinging all the uh, SPS corals. Yeah. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, it's great. Without that coral, it doesn't... It gives I a movement. Yeah, it gives, it gives, it gives movement, the yeah. movement yeah. and I would missing something. Yeah, yeah totally. It really gives a nice contrast being that red metallic look at a more like a green and the other colors and uh, colors in the, in the tank color contrast is really important yeah and i can take a little of it in my, that's yes kind of, yes that's good idea yeah. almost forgot it can you tell us a little bit about your fish you set in the aim of the of the, of the tank was mostly a smaller fish that was the, the start so i had quite a few uh trimmer gobies and uh, aviota gobies sadly they jumped out of the tank even with a netting on that's so, yeah. the reason why you've got the cover yeah, normally exactly. on the top <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah oh yeah. sorry to hear that yeah it's part of the, of the hobby sadly but yeah so that's why i now have just uh, introduced some bigger fish like the nds and the copper bands the lsd mandarins yeah a little bit bigger fish but not the big bulky fish i aim for max five five inches mm -hmm. uh, in full grown fish and I get them as small as I can get of course but, but NTS Govies Bed Moralia two species copper band yeah that's yeah the Kerman yeah, yeah yeah and a Tomini tom tom tank almost forgot that, with that one yeah I saw him yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your copper band yeah, Kerman yeah. does it eat frozen food from day one so nice it's very lucky I think it doesn't eat uh, dry food Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, frozen. It eats, yeah, eats it a lot. That's I feed mostly three, three, four times a day. Always two times frozen, three times dry food. But that's for the NTS and the gobies. And yeah, with uh, NTS you have uh, got that problem yeah, that you have to feed, feed a, lot, a few yeah. times yeah, a day. Yeah. I really like to feed a lot. It's not only, not only for the fish, but also for the corals, of course. The frozen I feed is mysis and the lobster eggs. Mm -hmm. Always after feeding that, you really see those tentacles from the SPS corals, as well as uh, phyto, zooton, from tropical marine, that is, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you do not feed the corals especially to I don't the next to feed. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's more more likely a broad feeding. Yeah. So you put it in the tank and they get what they, they can get. Many people ask what I feed the coniopora, but I really don't feed it. It's just it gets the food from the water. Yeah. I don't target feed it. Just good flow, good lighting, good husbandry. That's it. Yeah. And much love. Much love. <laughs> <laughs> what is that for a kind of LED construction? The Star Trek uh, construction. You mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I started off with the, the Mitros from uh, GHL, LX7. I've used that in the, the LX6 on my previous tanks. I really loved that one. After that, I switched to a T5 lighting. It was perfect, but I really missed that shimmering look uh, you get from LEDs. I switched back to the LX7, full LED, and last week I introduced uh, the LED bars, custom LED bars, just to get more light from the sides. So I really hope it's getting more uh, color to the sides of the corals. Some of the, uh, the SPS, the Formosas, the Joker, ex exactly, is starting to give shadowing to other corals. So I don't like trimming it. I don't like fragging it. So I'm really trying to get as much light from the sides with yes. just yeah, yeah, yeah. LEDs. Especially with that huge mushroom stone yeah. in the middle. It is difficult to cool. get enough light for from uh, both sides. Yeah. yeah, you really see that the light is more reflecting from the bottom towards the underside of the rockscape. That helps us also. Do you've got some plans with that tank in the next time? My focus last month uh, was mostly on getting uh, nice corals just to get more balance in the, in the tank because if you have mostly rock work and not le n not much corals yeah getting the balance is hard i think mostly especially for the, the elements you can test with normal test kits yeah you do a isop testing which you do every month but getting the balance in with loads of corals really helps and the focus last month was mostly corals but as you can see i really have Le less free space for placing new corals. Next month will be mostly fish and uh, letting the corals grow. Yeah. And you're going to be father, so yeah, it yeah, will also be difficult yeah. <laughs> to handle the hobby in the Thanks. first time. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in, in two weeks, I'm getting a father, so uh, my time will be limiting. I think. <laughs> I can imagine. I see a yeah. very huge skimmer for that little, little tank. tank yeah. yeah. 
And yeah, like I said, I feed like three, four times uh, a day. So I really needed a big skimmer just to get all the, the dirt out of the water. So it's the Vertex 150. Pretty big for the system, especially with just those few fish. Uh, but for, for the heavy feeding, it's really needed. The weird thing about it, uh, last month, it caused three times uh, power failure. I don't know why, the pump was clean. I cleaned it extra good after it, and now it's still running. I think I'll get a, a different one, just to be sure. I see a UV system. Also a very big one. Yes. 36 watts. Oh, okay. Running 24 hours a day. I've been battling uh, loads of dinos in the past. Uh, ah. After, after ad adding the, the sand last week, they're back. But it's mostly uh, amphidinium type of dino flashlights. So uh, UV isn't really helping, but it's for the better. I don't think a skimmer can be too big or uh, you should ru run it uh, for a couple hours a day. I run 24 hours, seven days a week. You see how much it takes out of yeah. the water. So that is also a good... Yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've emptied uh, the skimmer uh, yesterday, so yeah, it's, it's, it's getting a lot, of, a lot of dirt out of the water every yeah. day. I also run a small bag of carbon. You don't have a fleece filter? No. Okay. Uh, I, run, I started running uh, the, the filter socks maybe a month ago. I used to have about 20 kilo uh, of live rock in the sump system as well, but I noticed my nitrates, uh, nitrates were uh, climbing up. Also, the, the main scape is yeah. done with dead reef rocks, so with... Uh... It's uh, micro, micro rocks. Uh, okay. It's, yeah, it's dead rocks. I like to use live rocks. Scaping with live rocks is really hard. Uh, so that's the reason why I used uh, the dry rocks. Did you thought about an algae refuge? I've been thinking about uh, getting an uh, algae re reactor mm -hmm. uh, quite a few times last uh, last month. Still haven't pulled the plug, but yeah, we'll see. The system r runs pretty well now. What is your method of running the whole system? I'm running Belling, uh, Belling Original from Trop Tropic Marine. It's mostly uh, three-part dosing. Just so with the uh, GHL director? Yeah, the, the, the old one. It's the Dozer 2.0. I have that for uh, six years now, I think. Really works perfectly. I own, I have used it for uh, ATO as well. So I used one of the pumps to have it as an ATO uh, system. It worked magically. I've uh, added just a small pump and connected the Profilex now. The dozer is only dosing the KH, calcium, and uh, yeah, the ma magnesium uh, for the for the system. Last floor session for us. I'll stretch them. Yes, yes, yes. Take your time. <laughs> okay. I'd like to ask you, what would you have done differently? If I had the chance to change something before I started, it was a sump. Because I designed the, the whole system myself, so it's a custom uh, tank, custom sump. The first time I designed the tank, so. The first time is always uh, exciting, but yes. the wrong thing uh, with the sump is the small return section. So yes. if the ATO stops, the pump runs dry quickly. So yeah, the return pump uh, section would be bigger in the next uh, next build. How often do you water change, or do you? Yeah, I do uh, about seven to eight percent a week. That's about twenty liters. Mm -hmm. What for you is the best part of the hobby? Um, the creativity. Ah, Def yes. Definitely uh, the creativity. Yeah, you can shape it like, like the rock work, uh, the corals, but also coloring, coloration. That's, that's the best part, I think. Creating your own world. Yeah. 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 I like, yeah, you are an engineer, so yeah. your job is also full of creativity. Yeah. And totally. you can take yeah. that into your hobby too. Yeah. That's why I designed the tank myself, escaped it myself, of course. But yeah, I re really like replicating nature, and the Maldives, the coral uh, bombies. So yeah, that's that's a nice thing about it, I think. Nice. Yeah. Kiro, thank you very, very much for having us today. Yeah, nice to have you. Really, really cool tank. I hope it can inspire you. Also for the guys who always say, okay, man, it's great to see thousand liter tanks and ten thousand liter tanks but we want to create something at home too which maybe doesn't need so much space no no it's and that is brilliant for people collecting ideas in the nano nano world nano yeah it's, it's still world, a yeah. nano yeah what is the nano for you i think till three three hundred max yeah uh, yeah but my it's, opinion too it, that's total system because the display maybe max 200 liters yeah uh, 
I think it's uh, more related to display uh, volume. So yeah, this one is 180, still a nano. Yeah, yeah but then you've got the yeah. French water guys, and they said, oh man, 250 liters is not a nano. <laughs> 20 liters yeah. is a nano, yeah. so yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they are coming some nice algae tanks yeah. with less than I, 100 really liters. Love them. Really cool yeah, style, really, really cool. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. And in my opinion, this is the only way to set up a working nano tank yeah. in salt water. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. <laughs> nice, <laughs> man. Thank you very much. Feel free to like this video, follow. I'm gonna link uh, Guido's Instagram page also in the video description that you can check out some updates. Yeah. And yeah, thank you very much. See you next week. Ciao. Cool.